Hey, welcome back to the workshop. Today is Friday, the 4th of August, uh, 2023. This is going to be round two. We're going to be leak testing the right tank. Hopefully camera batteries don't die on me. A little bit of vantage point of what's going on. I'm very curious to see how this goes. When I was building the tanks more than a month ago, uh, this tank is the second one that I did the baffle installation on. And if you watched yesterday's video, you know that I had a couple of leaks on the baffle. So I'm just curious if when I did this one, I did it a little bit better or did I do it thinking I know what I'm doing and maybe I made some mistakes? I don't know. It'll be curious. It'll be interesting uh, to see how this one pans out. Uh, going with the Spectacles today because I need to order some more uh, contact lenses. Uh, not really pertinent, but anyways. Yeah, we'll just get into it and uh, gather my supplies. Yeah, good to go. All right, so we'll start doing it. Let's build an airplane. So much the same as the day before. Uh, got the tank set up in the cradle. Got a little plastic down so I don't uh, get my uh, beat up tabletop even more beat up and, and warped. That's that little um, AN fitting um, sort of a seal that goes over the top of the fuel pickup. Uh, there you see me putting in the um, the air valve um, in place of the, the sump quick drain and then uh, putting on the importantly colored yellow balloon. Uh, let's see. So at the beginning of this, I um, was posing the question, um, did I do a better or worse job or a similar job on the second tank baffle install? And uh, what we're going to see is the results are shockingly similar between the two, um, meaning that um, when we get into this, um, it'll go very much like the day before, um, meaning lots of struggling to get that rubber band on there and get the balloon secured properly, uh, run down to the other side, do some uh, packing tape over the top of the, um, over the fuel cap. Uh, but anyways, um, one thing, when you see me start to inflate this thing and the balloon doesn't inflate very much, one thing that I hadn't really given much thought to, um, and I said before, I don't want to go crazy with this pump, worried about over-pressurizing the tank, but also we're told that the balloon will pop, pop before the tank has too much pressure. And you're really trying to keep the, the pressure in the tank below one PSI. Mm -hmm which seems like really, really low, but also one thing that I didn't really consider is that there's a lot of surface in there, surface area in there. So one PSI over a really large area, that's, that's a, that requires a significant amount of pumping to get that thing to fill up, leaks or no leaks. Um, there's a large volume of air that's being compressed before it exerts enough pressure to inflate that balloon. If I think about what it takes for my lungs to blow one of those things up, then yep, it kind of makes sense. So uh, getting into the spring down, you saw me listening. I didn't hear anything, um, but because of the previous day's experience, I still wanted to give a listen and see if there was anything obvious going on there. Uh, spring along the rivet lines um, and for the stiffeners and the ribs and around the vent there, no leaks and um, getting here onto the the root rib or the inboard rib, here is where um, you just start to see, a, there it is. You can see on the lower portion of the baffle, so the corner, the, yesterday there was a leak, um, and that's not the same corner, the upper portion rather than the lower corner. Uh, and then today we have the... Um, I'll show you this later with it from a different angle. The iPhone video doesn't really matter. Um, but we have one in the corner of the baffle on the inboard rib. And then very ironically, interestingly, um, 
at the uh, the bow, this nearly identical uh, point of the baffle on the rear baffle on the upper portion as in the other one. So, like in the second bay, this time it looks like there there's a little bit of a run, maybe an inch and a half or two inches, where there are two, maybe two little leaks. So, I basically, um, and I'll show you here in a minute. I created hash marks to identify the length of that run. Um, so we've talked about that. I'll show you a little bit more of what those two leaks, I'll, I'll call the one um, on the rear baffle that I just described, I'll call that one leak because it's it runs a little bit of a span. I've described those leaks. Now let's talk about what I need to do about it. By the way, so uh, yeah, I did spend a lot of time checking over the rest of the tank and those are the only two things I could find. Um, again, on this tank, like the other one, nothing uh, on the nose uh, of the end ribs, which is awesome. Nothing along the rivet lines I could identify. You'll see me uh, maybe um, on the far end there where the fuel cap is, um, looking at it more closely um, i did get a little bubbling out from under the tape uh, which is not a big deal um, the fuel cap isn't necessarily going to create a perfect airtight seal uh okay so knowing that i have leaks in both takes um, um start investigating ways to repair leaks and i mentioned yesterday that uh, i wanted to do a little research on the possibility of making repairs with negative pressure. I've done some reading on that this morning. And to be honest, it's fairly inconclusive. Uh, people have varying opinions on um, the effectiveness of doing that. And I guess some of these opinions are um, uh, founded in experience. So you could call those facts. Uh, it has worked for some people. It has not worked for others. And it does seem like for the ones who have had some measure of success with it, um, the success oftentimes is temporary. It's, it, it appears that for many people, it's a Band-Aid fix. Uh, so there's that run of, you can see the right hash mark, the left one doesn't, the camera gets blown out by it, but it's right there. It's, it spans across, yeah, probably about two inches right there. Okay, so am I going to uh, experiment with using um, negative pressure, like just using a hand transfer pump and a manometer uh, sort of setup to um, draw some sealant in? And, and the way that it's described is to thin the sealant a little bit so it's a little bit less viscous and draw it in. Um, and then another method or another material that you can use is um, red Loctite. Apparently that's a suggestion from Vans. If it's just a, for example, uh, a rivet, um, red Loctite, um, they say gets wicked in there and will cure. The decision I've made today is to not make a decision. Uh, I'll do some more research on it. It may be worthwhile for me to experiment with that uh, um, first trying, uh, some negative, uh, pressure to draw it in, uh, the ones in the corners, uh, those leaks on each tank, um, I can use the syringes to, uh, in maybe lightly thin out a little bit of sealant, put it in a syringe and while using negative pressure, force it in there with some positive pressure from the outside. Uh, and then along the edge of the the baffle where the the leak is there, um, I can lay a thin bead along there and, and, and try to draw it in with negative pressure. It might be worth it to try that as an experiment because I don't think that it costs much in the way of uh, time or energy. Um, I, I don't have to make any holes in the tank to do that. So it might be worth it to try it and then let it cure, retest it, and maybe test it several times and see if it if it lasts. The reality is I don't need to put any fuel in these tanks for quite a long time. Um, and there are bigger projects to work on than, than repairing a couple of leaks right now. So 
those can be little side projects that take place over a period of time for now the tanks are constructed um on the left tank i do have access to both of the areas where leaks are um, i can remove the the access plate off of the uh, inboard rib and then also i can remove the fuel sender on the back baffle on that tank and get access to both on this tank um the corner one obviously i can remove that access plate with the fuel sender in the pickup and get to that corner from the inside however the um I may not be able to get to the other location. May not. I can't say for sure. It's, it, it might be possible that I can reach through the first bay and through the lightning hole into the second bay and get to that one to the inside. If not, then the next way to access that from the inside would be to cut an access hole in the, uh, the, the rear baffle. And on the right tank... Uh, rather the left tank where I have that blank access plate um, because remember we we moved the fuel sender um, and the fuel pickup on that one that blank plate is good to use for uh, doing the flop tube installation but I think that the actual original intended purpose was for being able to cut holes in the back baffle <laughs> that's what that thing is for um, so if I cannot um, get in through the access plate on the right tank and reach through the lightning hole, um, then that would that would be the the solution would be to um, cut a big round hole in the back baffle and repair it from in there, and then attach one of those blank plates there. Um, either way, um, it's not impossible. Uh, I mean, people deal with these problems on a regular basis. If your primary motivation is to fly the airplane, problems like this can be really heartbreaking. But if you are into it just as much for the building as you are for the flying, then this is just another part of the process and another piece of the puzzle to solve. So I fall in that ladder camp. Um, I'll do what it takes to get it right. And uh, I'll probably enjoy the process while I do it. Doing puzzles is fun. So see you next time.